What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Best Self Blueprint. So those of you who have tuned in before already know the mission of this podcast is to bring on people with the knowledge, insights, and experiences that hopefully will help you move the dial towards becoming the best version of yourself, whatever that means to you. So I'm going to run through the whole YouTube spiel right now. If there's anything that we talk about, which I guarantee there will be, that you like, find value in, go ahead and click that like button. If you are not subscribed, subscribe. This is going to be one of many awesome people that I'm sitting down with coming up in the near future. And then if there's someone in your life that could benefit from any of the topics we go over, that's why there's a share button. So do all those fun things. But without further ado, Mason Stevens, what is up? Not much, man. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me on. It is absolutely my pleasure. And it's there's something that I just find cosmically funny where it's like when you really go all in and you're aligned in your pursuit, people and situations just seem to pop up at perfect time. So I'm training for a 100 mile race. You just had the experience that is a 100 mile race. Yep. So that's kind of where I want to start is as someone who's done ultras, I know kind of the, the gold that comes from just the experience of the physical prep, the mental and emotional journey. What, what were some of the lessons that you learned, not just from the race, but from the whole journey that was the hundred miler? It's a good question. Um, there's quite a few different lessons that like I learned throughout the training. Um, and then there's lessons that I learned throughout the race. Like I'll start with the training. My training block was, wasn't a standard training block for a hundred because I was coming off of a marathon training block, which was a 16 week training block for that marathon. And then I had to get this hundred mile in because I wanted to finish two ultras, two fulls and two half marathons in 2022. Um, so it's just like the time was here and like, I have been training for the last four months for this marathon. And then I had still two months before the hundred miler. Um, but I'm going to tie both training blocks in to the hundred if that's okay. Cause I mean, go for it. Yeah. That four month training block for the, the marathon I ran in October is on October 2nd. I ran a 251 marathon, but so I was going for a sub 250, um, lacked on some nutrition come race day, but that's a story for a different time. Um, but through the training, like, of course I was training for speed. Then it got to the point where like, you have self doubt, like if you can reach your goal, like if it's attainable, like I didn't know if I was, could run a six thirty pace consistently and like with effort without effort. Um, and it took until literally the last like six weeks of my training for the marathon until like, I finally got in that rhythm where 630 didn't feel like too much effort 615 did like 620 did um so then come race day like it all played out and like I was disciplined I stayed through the plan like the biggest thing I learned was making sure to get my hard runs in even if it was crappy weather long day at work just didn't want to I, was, I mean you don't always want to run um we're just being consistent with myself and like doing that gave me the confidence come race day that that belief that I had in myself because I was so consistent would like come into play. So come like marathon day, like I believed in myself. I knew I put in the work. I didn't miss any of my hard workouts. And then come race day, like now it's time to show it. Yeah. So going into the seven weeks for the hundred, um, I just knew I had to up my mileage even more and just get those double long runs in and just get a lot more time on feet. Um, which is what I did. I did that. Like I built it up to only a 65 mile week at like week five or week four out from the hundred. And I went like 65, then 55, 45 a week of, I did like 15 before the actual race. Um, so the fundamentals that like I live by, like my mental mantra, cause I've heard you like talk about that before, um, is like steel cage for me. And like, I developed that in like my first ultra in the beginning of the year when I was training for a hundred K. And for me, that's just like, something that has been built over time. But whenever I like say steel cage or like go to that, like alter ego, different personality style, um, it's that I have like full confidence in myself, like 100% undeniable belief. And whatever I say that I'm going to do, I can do like, I can focus and be like purely vigilant on whatever that task at hand is. So that was like my biggest lesson this last year, but that is like come into this hundred miler. Cause I didn't know how much I would need to like go to that place. And some people it's like, the dark place or like the pain cave. Like 
I label mine as like a steel cage, but like it's a fortitude around my brain. Nothing can get in, nothing can get out except my pure focus. Um, yeah. Well, so real quick, I find this so fascinating. So there's two things. One, as we were just talking about, I experienced this last week, but there, there is something to be said about the skill that is separating whether you want to do something or not and just almost not even going on autopilot, but just not giving energy to the emotional experience when you just know you have to do something to achieve a big goal. And I think that's something that it, it's easy to skip by because you talk about it so casually, like you're like, yeah, just, you just have to do it. And that, that really is a skill set though. It's just like, you know, you don't get big biceps without doing bicep curls. Yeah. You don't get that discipline and you don't get that consistency without the skill of dissociating the emotional experience from the just, I have to go execute and do this thing. Yeah. So I find that fascinating. The other thing that I just find so funny is a lot of the people, I mean, whether it's big names or just people I've met personally in particularly athletics, they mm -hmm. have some type of alter ego that they go to. So I call mine the dark wolf. Because there's the that Native wolf. American, like the tale of the two wolves, which wolf wins the wolf that you feed more, the lighter, the dark. But there's something to be said about the power that comes from when you go into that dark place. This is essentially when I flip the switch to the dark wolf, where it's any negative thought, any self-doubt, that is food that I'm feeding the dark wolf. And it's just getting stronger. It's just going faster. It's just attacking more aggressively. And when you're in the ultra space, obviously you flow a million times from positive yeah. to negative, but it's hit that point now where it's like, all right, Trevor's running. We're having a good time. It's all sunshine and rainbows. And then a self-doubt thought hits and I'm like, all right, dark wolf, here's some, here's some food. And it's just crazy how powerful that, that ability to shift and leverage that is. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I couldn't agree more. Like it is, I talk about it so casually because I've been training like for so long to like be able to like disassociate myself in a sense. Like I also see it as in a positive aspect. I, like you could hear that and hear it, like take it with a negative connotation. But for me, it's a positive. It's just that like my focus is going to be en enhanced. Like I'm, I'm there. Like now I believe in myself and that like dark voice, like can't impact what I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, so then, okay. So Good getting into race day because mm. as I'm sure everyone realizes running a hundred miles takes a long time. So you're, yeah. you're with yourself, you're with your thoughts. You're obviously with other people on the course, but what were some of the things you learned about yourself when you were by yourself out there? So I will say I wasn't by myself too, too much. So the first 50 miles of the race, I got to run with, uh, her name was Karen. She won the race the year before. Um, and like, I met her at the Q and a expert panel the night before we talked about race and she's like, Oh, do you want to run with me? And I'm like, absolutely. Like I would love to. So the first 50 miles I was with her and she is a multiple bad water finisher. She runs for a, a nonprofit that, um, I don't want to like tell her story. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. Um, but it's an amazing, like, amazing nonprofit. Like she just does a lot of like freelance work. She's a lawyer too. She was 51 years old and like, she whipped my ass. Uh, like I was struggling. Like after like mile 40, the sun started to come out. The heat like got pretty warm. I'm in Missouri. So it's been like 30 to 40 degrees the last like month, two months here. And it was 80 degrees, sunny, not a cloud in the sky, 90% humidity. And like your boy was struggling. Um, so we were like, after a mile, like 40 to 45, we started doing like a walk run, like walk 2.2, finish the mile. But I mean, her walking, and I'm like, she's like 5'2", like super tiny. So I'm I'm 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 but she was like outstepping me. And like, I was putting in more effort power walking next to her than I was running. So <laughs> I was like, I made a goal to like hit at least 50 miles with her. Um, and I did. And I was like, you got to like, you go get it, queen. Like. I need to slow down. Like I knew the heat was killing me. Um, so then from there, like I told my pacer, my buddy, Justin Peters, 
um he he and i ran our first ultra ever together in february we did the rocky raccoon 100k but he came back to help pace me to finish my like 100 mile this year so honored with him but like he jumped in from like 50 to maybe like 55 then i wanted him to take a break because i knew i was going to need him more on the back end then he jumped in again at like 60 but like in those moments that i was alone i just like there's two things I always write on my wrist. It's like grow and gratitude. So like I only grow through pain and like not pain, but you only grow through uncomfortable situations where there's a lesson to be learned. And then gratitude, because I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have to have the ability to run, to have the people around me, to like breathe the air, to, to walk um, and just truly be grateful for everything present. So I try to like get really present in that moment. Or if I'm in like the pain cave or like the the, the hurt, then I'm just taking it as an opportunity to grow. So those are like the two things that I always like look forward to. Um, and then like there was, a, I was alone for the last four miles too. And it was a moment of, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's been hard for me to like cultivate with like my friends and like Justin and my mom. I'm like, I don't know how to express. I don't think I'm intelligent enough or have the vocabulary to say like how I feel in like those moments, like those last four miles was like no music. I didn't listen to music at all, except between miles 84 and 90, 96. Cause the last 14 miles, me and Justin, I told Justin, I was like, dude, we're not walking again. Like we're running all the way to the end. I was like, we were doing math. I was supposed to pace like 2 AM, like 2 20 AM, which was like 20 hours and two, 20 minutes. I was like, there's no way I'm running over 20 hours. So like 14 miles out, I like flipped that switch. And like, I want to say it was still cage, but I went to like a whole never another planet. Like I was just in like a twilight zone where my body just did what my mind wanted. Um, and like, I knew I was like, you know, I've run a hundred half marathons. Like, what is this one run? Like I've done 84 miles or 86 miles. I could run 14 more miles. Um, then he actually had to dip out the last four miles and then I was alone, but I could see the lighthouse at that point, which is like my focal point. And like in those moments, like, even though I'm in so much pain, like every step hurts, but like every breath was like a grateful, like so cliche, but like life is breath. Like I just felt life every time I was breathing because like, I knew what I just went through, like the struggle I felt, the pain I had, the embarrassing moments, like just the doubt, because even those last seven weeks of that training period, I was just unsure. I was like, I've never ran over 62 miles. And that was in February. And then I've just been like a marathon runner in the middle of the year. I was like, can I run a hundred miles? Like, and then I had so many people who like believe in me that it's like, I would be upset if I let them down, but then I don't even want to think about not doing it. Like, it's not even a thought I want to entertain. Yeah. Um, so, so one, like thing, one thing still- I will say though, real quick, there's, and this is just my belief. This obviously isn't just a factual objective thing, but I think there's a reason that there aren't words to describe that moment that you're talking about the last four miles. I think that's just an intangible experience meant for only the individual who put themselves in the position to earn it. And so it's, there, there's just something about it that it's, it's just for you, which makes it so hard to explain to somebody else. It's like when you have a dream and then you wake up and you're trying to explain it and you realize that you're just not doing it any yeah. justice. And I, I really do think it's because it's this existential download that is only meant for the observer and the, the, the man in the arena, if you will. Yeah. I like that, dude. That I'm that's how I'm gonna start explaining it. Cause me and Justin were even talking after the race. And like I feel like even though like Justin ran like 30 to 40 miles, I think he ran 30 miles that whole day. Um, but like at the end, because he went through those 14 miles with me, and like Justin collapsed the last six, like that at mile 96, like he like went to the, he's like Mason, you took me to the darkest place I've ever been. He goes, But I need you to finish this on your own. And then like afterwards we were talking about this moment and like, he knew what I was, I meant, but like, I was like, I don't know how to say it. He goes, I don't either. He goes, I don't think I like ever will be. So like you saying it that way is like really cool. Gives me a little bit like peace of mind, but yeah, it's like, I want to be able to share it, but I just don't know 
if I can or if yeah. it is just like yeah, I mean that that's exactly it, right? Like it's it's just like again, any big thing. Like I, I remember I took a road trip a few years ago and one of my stops was the Grand Canyon. Mm-hmm. And before I had actually gone and experienced it myself, so many people showed me pictures of the Grand Canyon and said, I can't do it justice with pictures or words. You'll just have to see it. And I was like, come on. And then I went and saw it and I realized I got back and was trying to explain it to people. And I'm like, Oh shit, they were right. You really can't do it any justice unless you actually experience it. And I think that's the same exact thing with these grandiose achievements in life is when you know the work you put in, you know the the pain that you went through, you know, you know how rarefied the air is towards the finish line of that experience that you had. Yeah. And yeah, I think again, there's just some some thing where again, whatever your belief is, God, the universe fairies, whatever, like yeah. they just grant you access to some feeling, some knowing and alignment that just can't really be described. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it is, it's just like, you went through such a special moment. Like it's like the grand Canyon, like you, you went to see this place and now you got to experience it, but you can't ex- explain an experience. Mm. Like, yeah, dude. So true. All right. So yeah, that's, that's something we'll, we'll transition a little bit because you're a lot more than just a runner, but that's just something I I always want to bring people on here who have done the thing to really show people. And I mean, you may be a very special human being and I know you are, but to me, it's like, you don't have to have some crazy skill set. You don't have to be like a top 1% in anything. You just have to have clarity on what the task at hand is and get really bought in and convicted behind the pursuit. Absolutely. And so that's just something, the the more I can get people like, because I would say you and I seem to be very similar just from the couple minute conversation we had before, but absolutely just that, that it doesn't take in, in innate, extraordinary character trait to go after big extraordinary things it does not like a lot of people like at my work think that i'm just a runner but it's like i was the most average joe runner known to man like i did run college like at d3 but i was just like i was a decathlete because i was so average at everything that it made me good at being okay at everything um but like my main event was the 400 i was never like the top three like i was always like fourth or fifth um, I was never a distance runner. So like I, my main events were pole vault javelin and the 400. And then I graduated and like committed myself to in some endurance challenges and then tried running and then like got good at running. But like, I tell my coworkers, like a little over a year and a half ago, I was 200 pounds. and like, I just power lifted and they're like, no way. And I was like, yeah, like this hundred K that I ran in February was the furthest run I've ever ran over a 10 K. Like 10K was the furthest run I ever did when I signed up for the 100K. Like, but then I committed myself to like, if I'm going to do something, do it to the best of your abilities. Like how you do one thing is how you do everything. So I just made a commitment. I was like, you know, if I'm going to commit to this, like I'm going to go to compete and not just finish, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, there's something about, and I have my plans beyond the ultra space as I'm sure you do as just as an athlete and as someone who's so curious about what my potential in this little meat suit is, but there was something about, dude, it's uncanny how similar our story is where I ran track, not in college, but I ran track in high school, did the 400, 300 hurdles. Yeah. I I told people like, I will not run more than 400 meters. To me, the 800 meter was a long distance run. And so it was just one of those things when I, got into self-development and really trying to make the most out of life, I wrote down some of my limiting beliefs that came to mind. And one of them was I'm not a distance runner. And so I signed up for an obstacle course race called Savage Race. Now, mind you, it was a 5k. So this still was nothing crazy at all, but I got beat up. And so it just cascaded into, I ended up going after like the biggest, most tough obstacle course races And then that transitioned into, okay, now take away the obstacles and I'm just stuck with running, pushing that. And it, it really, I think 
when you have the right mindset around just optimization of the human experience, it really becomes such a you such a useful and empowering tool to the the concept I was talking about earlier before we started recording is like just pulling on the thread and seeing yeah. how much thread there is for you to pull. Yeah, I think that's the best. I I've always just said I'm a professional tryhard. Like people are like, oh, how are you? Like so good. Like how do you? I'm like I just try hard. Like I'm the most average Joe, but like I'm just a professional tryhard. Like I'll just try really hard. Like I'll make a commitment and I follow through with it. Um, but I know I'm not like I guess I am skilled, but it's because I put in so much work. Like I've ran almost two thousand miles this year. Um, it's like I'm not good. I just did a lot of that. Like a lot. Like yeah, you'll and- you'll inherently get good if you just don't stop doing it. And yeah, it's it's kind of like there there are certain things that require like basketball. I am under six foot. There is no way that I'm going to be competing against the guy if if I practice my skills and a guy who's six six practices their skills. It's safe to bet on the six six guy. Yeah, but there are so many things in life that are way more based on consistent effort put in Mm -hmm. versus natural gifts. Yeah. And so that's, that's such a powerful tool again for anyone listening is there are definitely things in your life, no matter who you are, no matter what path you've chosen, where if you control the controllables effort being one of them, you can 10 X, almost every part of your existence, whether that be finances, career, community and charity, health and fitness. And that's something else I want to talk to you about because we've, we've gone all in on the health and fitness mostly because again, I would have kicked myself. If we got off here and I didn't talk about a hundred miler. Yeah. But another thing that you do is the nonprofit finding future. Yeah. And I think it's so cool how you set that up where it, it's, like helping people who are looking to like dream big. Yeah. So do you want me to like explain find a future a little bit or like how I started it? Yeah. Just talk about, I mean, one thing that I'm always curious about is like a, what inspired the concept Mm -hmm. B what made you believe you could do it. And then C just kind of telling people about what it is in general. Okay. So why I started it was so I got a local scholarship in a very small like town. It's called Dixon, Missouri. It's right outside of Fort Leonard Wood. I was an army brat, like growing up my entire life. And some random family gave me, I think it was like $1,500 and they didn't know me at all. Like, and it's like my graduating class was 71. So very small, like population of the town's like 1500. Some random family, like farmer family, like took care of me. Like I applied to their scholarship. They wouldn't gave a chance on me and then like granted me $1,500 for school. So I guess where it all started. And then like, as I like graduated and got older, like I wanted, I always wanted to have a scholarship fund, like in my name. Like I just thought it would be cool. I could give back. Like I wanted to give the same opportunity that that family gave to me. So that's where it started. But then going into like how I thought I could do it, kind of came off of a, on, on a whim. So when I turned 23, I was living in Thailand. And then that's where I started like my endurance and like mindset journey. Like I read David Goggins can't hurt me while I was there. Um, like got into meditation. So focus like, um, and then I also read Wim Hof, uh, what doesn't kill us. And it's by Scott Carney. And then Wim Hof is the ice man. Like, I don't know if you know about him. If, oh if yeah. If anyone who's listening doesn't, you should. Um, but like I got into like breathing uh, routines and like the Wim Hof method. But like now I use that when I run and like to help me with focus, like blood flow control, like mental body control. So it started there on my 23rd birthday. I did a 23 like years young challenge um, where I like ran and biked 23 miles, like half and half. I did 23 laps in the pool. 23 muscle ups, 2,300 ab workouts. I lifted 23 Imperial tons, like 10 things of like just 23 themed. And it ended up taking me like eight and a half hours, like just in the gym nonstop. And like, I didn't know, look about nutrition. Like I had like peanut butter and jelly and like two protein shakes that whole day, like (laughs) nine and 23 Imperial tons is like 56, 50 to 60,000 pounds. Um, But like it got, and like I did the run bike, 
in my Nike Metcons at this point, like to explain how much of a runner I was not like, I decided to go run 12 miles in Metcons on a treadmill, uh, <laughs> destroyed me. Cause I did like eight miles and then it destroyed me for like the whole second half of the day. Like could not fucking walk around. I only did like eight miles on the run. And then I just did the rest of them biking um, to make 23. But then, or like, man, I don't know what I did. Something like that. But did that challenge. Then on my 24th birthday, I was living here in St. Louis. I ran one mile on the hour, every hour for 24 hours straight. Um, and at this point, like I just did challenges for me. Like I just wanted to push myself, see how far I can go. Like I truly believe when you do challenges like this and you get to the point of like, why am I doing this? And you question yourself and like you can get past and go forward. That's where you truly learn the most about yourself. Like I believe that you unlock a new like level in your brain. Um, and like I do just like side tangent, I try to like correlate all these things that like I do like the discipline and stuff on into real life. So like if I'm disciplined with training, I can be disciplined with reading. I could be disciplined with tracking my food. I can be disciplined, disciplined in like trying to maintain a relationship, um, friendships, et cetera. But back onto the story. So 24th birthday, one of my neighbors like saw me running every hour on the hour. And she's like, what are you like fun? Like, what are you doing? Like, are you fundraising for anything? And I was like, no, like it's just my birthday challenge. I do it every year. It was my second year doing it, but She's like, and but that gave me the idea, like, oh, I've always wanted to like have the scholarship in my name. I feel like it's respectable. If I do something very hard, people will fundraise. Um, and then finding future came about because like I just want to like help people find their future. So you can apply with and if you're enrolled in any additional education, whether it is like college, university, if you're in trade school, if you're trying to get a personal training certificate, like if you're trying to get your massage therapist license, like at coding program, like any type of additional education, if you can prove that you're enrolled, like you can apply. So I didn't want to limit it just to college because I don't think, I don't think you have to go to college to like have a successful life. Like, did I? Yes. I got my bachelor's. I'm almost done with my master's. Like I love learning and like education is king for me. Um, but so that's like, I was like, okay, like I can actually like do this. Like I could do a challenge. I could fundraise. Like I get my ben mental benefit. And then I also fundraise and like do something cool. So the first big challenge I did was uh, there's a Katy trail, which is an old runway that runs from Kansas city, like right outside of Kansas city for anyone that's going to pick me for being wrong, right outside of Kansas city, all the way back to St. Louis. And it's 245 miles. So I got like a 1980s Schwinn road bike from somebody 1990s, I think. And like, I did all road training. Um, like I went public with it on like my Instagram, like I got somebody to help me with a website, um, and, like make it live. And then I just like fundraise through GoFundMe because it, like it does direct deposit. And then I just show people like, this is exactly how much I gave. But so I did the KD trail, uh, 245 miles. It was to, my goal was to do it in nonstop. So like under a day, but it took me 25 hours straight. So it wasn't one day, it was a day and an hour. Um, but yeah, I rode right outside Kansas City all the way back to Mannix, right outside of St. Charles, Missouri, um, 245 miles. And I did it with a buddy um, who just wanted to like do that kind of adventure with me. His name was TJ. Um, absolute brother. I love him. Like we went through that experience together, like no sleep, struggling. Like my mom was my pit crew back then, too. And she drove every like 30 to 40 miles, would meet us at a trailhead, um, refuel us we would eat and then get back on the road. Um, so that's like where it started. And then I did a couple more challenges. I went out to Washington and did a hiking challenge um, where I hiked 30,000 feet in elevation, like 15 up, 15 down the same like mountain five times. Um, and then that year in 2021, I was able to grant $3,000 in scholarships. So I gave out three $1,000 scholarships. Um, and they were just people who like applied online. Like I knew two of them personally. Um, and then one was somebody who like just followed me on social media. So it was super cool. Like I did a really, I got really into like the interview process and the application process. Like I had fun. So I phone screened everyone too. And yeah, it was a good time. Um, but then, yeah, that leads me to like this year where I started doing all these running challenges. Um, and then next year I have some pretty big stuff lined up too, but Dude. Yeah, so that's kind of like finding future. And then I just believe like, yeah, you do the challenge and then I can teach it and it's respectable for me to fundraise money. So 
man, yeah. it is weird how similar we are. Like the more you're talking, I'm like, cause that, that is exactly the way that I view essentially every athletic challenge. Cause I, I'm the type of person where I'm already thinking like five, 10 years down the line of like, what are some challenges I want to do? Yeah. And just the realistically understanding that the amount of training that will go into them and it's the same thing. I'm, I'm really hoping that I can leverage the, it's exactly what you talk about, like gratitude. I have one tattoo and it just says grateful. And it's because oh, I really that, understand. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. I got this on uh, my 25th birthday and there's a whole story behind that too. But um, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful for my health. I'm yeah. grateful I, I do believe that although I've put a lot of effort into developing myself, I've been blessed with just certain lenses that I have on life and the beauty that life provides. And so if I can take that and put my focus on performing these challenges, setting it up in a way that benefits other people, whether that be charities, a community of people, whatever, that's just, and it's, it's almost selfish to be selfless like that because it makes you feel so good. And dude, yeah. I like, I got to give you so much respect for setting up, like facilitating your own charity while still being in school, while going after all these things. That's just, it's so cool. And I, I've been saying this a lot to people that I really respect, but just like, not just setting the example, but being the example, I think you're doing such a good job of that. Thank you. That means a lot. Like you said that in one of your, your videos that I watched, like I completely agree. Like, dude, we're so similar. That's why like when I first jumped on the call, I was just like fangirling for a second. I was like, bro, we are the same. Like, we, we think <laughs> But like going into regards of like holding ourselves to such a high standard so that we can inspire or like help influence or I don't, I don't like that word, like influence. Like I don't want to influence. I want to connect with people. Like I don't just want to be like, yeah, I like to make genuine connections. Like I like building like fun and positive relationships. Um, but holding myself and like holding yourself to that standard just shows like other people, it, it is easy. It's easier. It's attainable. Like if you can do it, and, like Mason's an average Joe, like Trevor's just, just, you know, same as me. Like they can do it. Like I can do it. Like we don't look like physique models. Like we're not like we don't look like the D one athlete, but like we're people who just like are committed. You stay disciplined. And like, if we can do it, like you can do it. Like it's just practice and reps over and over. And like, yeah. That's it. When I think when you're doing it for something bigger than yourself too, it drives you to go further than you would out of a place of ego. So like, so another thing that we have in common is you were talking about, you wrote down on your arms, like growth and gratitude. Mm -hmm. So I have this wristband. So I did a 24 hour ultra last year as a fundraiser for, yep. um, a group called the little warrior foundation. They fund child cancer research. And I have a personal tie to a kid named Gus who has been battling it almost his entire life. And so what I wrote down on my wrist was I wrote down one on this arm and then the donation amount per mile on this arm. So I thought about it like all you need to focus on is one mile at a time and every lap that you're willing to endure gives them that much more money to potentially save a kid or multiple kids lives. Yeah. And dude, you feel like such a little bitch if you think that you're going to quit when you're running for that type of cause. Like if yeah. it's just you out there and you're like, you talked about like, why am I doing this when it really is just like, oh, so I can kind of flex on them, which that's never the reason I do it. But yeah. just, just for the example, like when it's just about you, it's so much easier to just kind of like pack it in and walk away than if you're fighting for something bigger than yourself. Yeah. And it does turn in, I, I call it like, there's a certain point where it turns into a dog fight. Yeah, I definitely know the dog fight stage, but like, I, I couldn't agree more. Like just knowing your why and like, if you have a strong why, let it be like for us, like our nonprofits or like your own self mental growth. Like it makes it easier. Like a person who enjoys the journey will always go further than somebody who likes the destination. Cause like, if you can get used to that, then you can go on multiple journeys. But if you hate the journey and you finally get to the destination, that's all you want. Like you're just looking for that immediate like gratification at the end. And like, yeah. 
Yeah, nobody runs a hundred miles to just be able to flex on someone. Like, <laughs> yeah, who wants so. to? Like, dude, I would run in nine. I took me nineteen hours, nineteen hours straight, just so I can like come back and flex. Like, it's not that cool. Like, okay, I should have gotten your car, bud. Like, that's why we have them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like, if race taught me anything. This last hundred was like how impactful the community is, and like how. Like, it's not about you, but it's about everyone else because everyone else is wanting the same thing that you want, which is like your self growth, but it's about helping everyone else get to that point. And like, that's like, I feel like how we think now, like if I can help at somebody who like wants to run a 5k or wants to be like, have more sales calls, like, because like, they just want to be disciplined in a different aspect. Like, that's what I want to do. Like, I don't want you to go run hundred miles. Like, I don't think you should, like, it's not healthy. It's not. I mean, it's fun. You do learn a lot about yourself, but you could still like get that benefit of like doing your first 5k. Like, yeah, it's, it's a very unique, like perspective. Yeah. Yeah. That's something. Uh, so a couple people who know me well, I I've told many people at this point, this is my magnum opus in the ultra space. And I'm, I'm really at the point where I think if, and when I pull this off doing the entirety of project ultra for me, like I've signed, sealed and delivered everything I need to from ultra endurance. And then it's time for me to transition into other areas of fitness, but like, dude, it, there, there is something about just that one and done squeak it out. Like you said, like, I, I would argue much over if you have good running form, a half marathon really gets to be like, there's, there's no healthy benefit to it. It's just, you're going out there to kind of prove something to yourself more yeah. than anything. And that inner voice, but there is so much to learn from that process. And so th this is something I, I fully believe in the multiplicity of self. And that's why I can never boil down what I do or who I am to like, oh, I'm a personal trainer. Or, oh, I'm a business owner. Or like, it's so hard for when someone says, what do you do for me to answer that in a short way without gritting my teeth? Yeah. And I think you're in the same boat because you've got, you're an athlete, you're running this nonprofit and you got a hat that shows your other hat that you wear metaphorically yeah. and literally, which is first form. So this is something and I would argue everyone in the health and fitness space knows what first form is, but following a couple of the people who work there with the Frisella brothers and a few others, that's a really cool culture that must like just empower you whenever you're oh. around the crew. But if you could just talk on maybe, well, first of all, like what it is you do there, but also what is it like to be part of a company that really emphasizes like show up and execute? Do the work. Um, dude, I absolutely love it. Um, so what I do there is I'm our external event coordinator. So if you ever see a, like we do, I do all organization for any event that like a booth gets set up at. So if there's a first form booth there, like I put hands on it. So it's like new events. Like I work with relationships for that, like schedule that um, existing ones. Like I do everything that goes into an event with a CrossFit competition, bodybuilding show, marathon. Um, we went to a farmer to farmer agriculture event recently. Um, super cool. Um, but I do everything for that. So scheduling those um, and like going to those too. Absolutely love it. It's a great time. I get to like go meet hundreds and uh, thousands of people at this point and talk about our products and like truly because I can relate like I personally take these products like during my hundred miler every day like daily health nutrition um so like it means a lot to me because I get to make that impact that I want with finding future like through my work too because like I can tell you how this product is truly gonna help you live better and healthier and with less pain and like more cognitive function um, and it's because I know, cause I take it too. Like, um, so that's what I do there working with the, the under like Sal and Andy is an absolute, like honoring, like humbling experience. 
Um, they set up the culture there where it's absolutely insane. Um, just to where everyone is ambitious, everyone works on like additional education, everyone works on their progression, everyone is supportive. Um, it's really, it's weird. It's like, you're all a team, like your, your favorite sports, like your team in high school, but now you're all doing it in your professional careers too. And like Sal, it's so cool. It's sad. I wasn't there this last Friday, but he did a mandatory company half marathon. Um, and he gave them 45 days to train and like everyone knows, like come came to me because like I'm known as like the runner at first form. Um, so like I helped a lot of people out and it got it was like an anonymous day. So we didn't exactly know when it was going to be until like the week of. And of course, I was out of town for an event. But it was just so cool to like see all like 400 employees like go out and like give the best effort that they could like they even put a whiteboard out like on the it's a half mile around our building and they did it all around our building so 26 laps around our building um, but they pulled a whiteboard out and said if it's not hard you're not doing it right because it's not that like he wants somebody to just like go in like diddy daddle like through it and be like oh okay i'm getting off of work like it's because like he knows that there's such a lesson to be learned like we know that when you push through something the self-confidence and like how proud you are of doing something and it worked like, again, me being the runner, all of the, everyone who just ran their first half marathon wants to come tell me. And I love it. Like I get so excited, like, and I hope that like, maybe they see that or not because they know how many people come up and tell me, but like, I get so excited because I see how proud they are. And I'm like, that's, that's like what it's all about. Like, that's why I do it is so I can like make myself proud. And like, like the reason you do it is like, you did this to make yourself proud. And like, look how like happy you are. Like, Somebody told me that it was the first time he's made himself proud like this whole year. And I was like, dude, like, thank you for telling me that. Cause like, he knows, like I've helped him like with some running stuff. And it, it was just like, it just means so much. It's like another one of those things that like, I can't explain, but it's like the impact, but it's all these people like went and did it. So just the culture is insane. Like we have such a standard too, where like you just clean up after yourself. You like push your chair in, like you take care of one another. And it's just because like we care about our quality of work so that we can show that like, we'll care about you. Like if we care about you, we'll care about the smallest things too. Um, they've done just an electrifying job there. Um, yeah. So there's a few things I want to unpack. The first thing that really stood out to me kind of at the beginning of just explaining why you do what you do. There is something to be said about whether you provide a product, a service, whatever it may be, like as, as again, I grip my teeth trying to boil it down, but I will boil myself down to a health and wellness coach. Yeah. yeah. And in that space, there have been times earlier in my career where I was telling people to eat these things and do these workouts and do this to get better sleep. And then I'd go home and like eat a frozen pizza and have drinks and not sleep oh, God. at all. And it's like there, when you're not personally backing and in alignment with what you're serving to the world, yeah, it just, it's such a different experience than with what you're talking about where, and our gym actually has first form products. So I know for hey. a fact, it's, it's a really high quality company with high quality products that have high quality ingredients and the delivery on the why behind them making it the way they do is impeccable. And to be able to tell people, I don't just recommend this for you. I recommend it because I've tried it in these situations yeah. and it works. And I, I think that's phenomenal. I think that's something that, I mean, it's, it's just a gut check. Like if, if yeah. what you're doing, whether for your profession or just things that you talk about are things that you're preaching, but not practicing, maybe take a second look at what you're doing. And then the, the one that really stood out to me more than any of those though, is how you were talking about the thing that really pains me to see is when I have a friend who like they go out and they run like three miles and they're so proud that they ran three miles, but then they're talking to me and they're like, yeah, I ran three, but like, I'm sure that's nothing compared to you. And it's like, oh, I hate dude, that dude. hard is relative. Like hard yeah. does not mean like if I went up to a professional like power lifter and I was amped up about the new PR bench that I hit, 
you best believe it's nowhere close to what they hit. But yeah. it doesn't take away from the fact that for me, through my lens and my experience in life, that was freaking awesome. And so that's that's something like kind of the two sides of that coin is when people try to minimize it because of the subjectivity of what they did versus what I did. That just hurts me, dude. Cause I'm like, no, 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 no. That's awesome. Like, I'm yeah. proud of you. That's so cool. And then when you get the people who are unapologetic and they're like, fuck yeah, I just did like, I just ran a mile without stopping. And I'm like, fuck yeah, you did. And it's like, yeah. it's just such a cool, like you said, it's that connection. It's that real authentic energy. And it's, yeah. dude, nothing beats that when you can really just like see someone not just alive, but living. Yeah. They're just lit up. Um, yeah. And people like do that to me. They're like, Oh, I'm sure, you know, 13 miles is nothing. I'm like, don't, don't compare. Like, don't compare. Like I will interrupt them immediately and just say, don't compare. Um, Cause it's, it's just different. Like when I first started, dude, like I got jacked when I ran like four miles, like I was like, hell yeah, boy. Like I'm a pro <laughs> runner. Like, and like, I'm a goofball at heart. And like everyone at like work knows that too. Like, I just like, I love to be a kid at heart. Like, I, people are like, oh, you're just like a kid. I'm like, yeah, because if you don't like you use it, you lose it. And if I, for me, that's my kid brain. Like if I don't use my kid brain, I'm gonna lose it. Like I got to like run with my nephew. This is, I'm just going on a side story real quick. Is that okay? Oh, you go for it. That's why you're right <laughs> here. Yeah. I uh, got to go for a run with my nephew. He's seven um, over Thanksgiving for the first time ever. And like, I made him run like four miles and like, he does cross country, but he does, it's like one to two miles. But like I made him run four and like just the experience to like get to like see him and like do that with him was just so like loving. Like it was just like I'm so like happy like he's enjoying it. Like we just had conversation like we walked if we needed to. Um, But like it's just so cool to like get to like have that. And like that's part of like those small those small wins like mm -hmm. yeah no running like 13 miles is still a lot for me like but don't try to compare so it's like when I'm comparing to like a moment with my nephew it's like even those like those three miles or four miles is like ama amazing to you like the four miles I ran with him probably my favorite four some of my favorite four miles I've ever run and like I was going slow like it's not like I always want to run fast but just like enjoying those little moments to like keep your journey going yeah yeah dude I gotta say you got you got a lot of just really inspiring things going. I mean, it's, it's, this is something surprisingly, this, this is the person I think does this the best in the public eye is, uh, I don't know if you know, Rob Deerdeck. He, yeah, he was absolutely. a skateboarder. Now he's like a serial entrepreneur and venture capitalist. And he better than anyone I've come across optimizes his time, his energy and his focus in a way that allows him to only pursue things he is passionate about in a way that allows him to live a harmonious life. But it sounds like, like, dude, anyone who is the example of that is someone that I just want to like, I want to get to know. I want to see, see behind the curtain, see how they operate yeah. because you, you definitely fall into that category. I mean, you, you wanted to help other people. So you started a nonprofit, you want to push yourself. So You've done that to the extreme. You want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're living in alignment with who you are. And so it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, it just based off of the external reality you're living, it seems like you've been very intentional about placing the puzzle pieces in a way that allows you to align with what I started talking about earlier, which is that multiplicity of self, where it's like the athlete Mason is happy. The worker mason is happy the charity mason is happy yeah. the family mason is happy and that that's something that i i hope people take away from you is you don't have to just go all in on one thing you can go all in across the board and it can work if you're intentional about how you set it up yeah like i've had people tell me because one more thing I do is like, I also run a boating business in the summer at Lake of the Ozarks. Like I have a boat, I do captaining, but like, they tell me that like someone's told me like I have my hand in too many pots. And it's like, I don't think that I have my hands in too many pots. Like I'm not slacking in any one area, but it's depending on what time I need to focus on. So like 
say I have my five pots, but like running a race is coming up. I'm just going to put some more time in this pot and then take a little bit out of like the boating pot, you know, summer's down. I don't have anything except like prepping the website for next year. So boating like takes the least of my time. And like, if I want to do more stuff on finding future, then I just up that pot a little bit. Like I always keep my work part consistent. Like I don't ever drop down. If anything, I would just pick that up more, but like, I'll even like lower my training a little bit. If I need to like focus on like getting a work task done, like I had to do that for two weeks. Like I needed to pass a test. Um, I slowed down my training. Like I knew this was my priority. And then uh, once I passed that test, then my pot came back down a little bit and I was able to like redistribute. Um, it does take practice. And like I've asked for tips before, of like how to manage all of that, but it, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Just like we said earlier, like reps are reps. Um, yeah. Like every day of practicing your daily routine every day is still practicing it. You just get better at it. Exactly. And dude, that, that's something now part of me believes, and this is kind of just me talking to myself, but I guess I've never shared this before on the podcast is part of me believes that maybe I have some type, is it like ADD is attention deficit disorder where like I've intentionally set up my day knowing that like I've tried nine to fives before and it lasted like at, at About minimum, a couple of days at most, yeah. a couple months, just because I, I, my, the way my brain works, yeah, I can't just do one thing. And so now my day is set up where it's like, all right, do my workout for project ultra, do some stretching, do some business stuff, train some clients, sit down for a podcast, do my next workout, go back over here and clean. And like, I'm just always moving around. But for me, that actually leaves me with so much more energy because I'm able to shift my focus. Yeah. And every time I do, I feel like I'm going in fresh. And so that's, it's something to really think about if you are someone who like your best, just sitting down planting and just going at one thing, understand that's your strength and leverage it. If you're like me and you just go a wall the entire time you're awake, leverage that. Yeah. But I just hope that the, the main takeaway up until this point, I've got a couple last questions to ask, but up until this point, I hope people take away, like you can do what you want. You just have to abandon excuses. You have to overcome the emotions that pop up and the self-talk that pops up and have clarity, have an outline, if not a plan, and just be able to execute and adapt along the way. Absolutely. I agree. Couldn't agree more. All right. So I got two last questions. The first one, I've been asking so many people this. Just I'm so curious just with how the world is right now. So let's say my uh, amateur podcasting blue snowball microphone was hooked up to an earpiece that everyone had. And let's just assume everyone knows English for some reason. Okay. If if you could speak one message into this that every human being could hear, what's a message that you believe people just need to hear right now? What what's something that you think is a capital T truth that people in general just kind of need to be reminded of? It's a good one. Um It's like, I wish I had some like cliche one line, but I don't, I would say we'll start cliche. We'll start cliche. Life is always going to be a roller coaster. You go up and down a lot, but whenever you are on the up, make sure you enjoy it because going down, you'll always be able to come back up. So what I mean by that is even though times are hard, if you can remember to believe in yourself and know that you've gotten through something that's hard before, or if it's your first time going through something hard, if you can believe in yourself, any time that you go forward, you can look back on that moment and know that if you got through it, then you can get through it now. Mm, that's powerful. Dude, That that's really powerful. I mean, that's something it, I, I found this so cheesy when I first heard it, but then I like the more I thought about it, I'm like, man, it, it actually is so true though, is I was listening to, I don't remember, maybe Ed Milet's podcast. And one of the guests said, like, up until this point, you have survived 100% of your worst days. So who's to say you can't survive one more? And at first I'm like, oh, that's so cheesy. And then it was one of those, it's like a bad song that gets stuck in your head, except the the longer it stayed planted, the more I was like, holy crap, that's actually a really I like cool this. thought. Yeah. 
And like, I like that a lot too. It's, it's so true though. And like, you're talking about life, life has frequency, right? Like there's, there's amplitude to it. There are highs, there are lows. And obviously, yes, there's a way to navigate it so that you can immerse yourself and be super present in the highs and have that, like this too shall pass mentality in the lows while still being in it, experiencing the human experience and taking the lessons from it. But I, I, yeah, I just think reminding people that like each, each moment is temporary and to heed the benefit that comes from whatever that moment is giving you, dude, I think that's so powerful and so crucial for people to hear. Yeah. I mean, that's like why I do the challenges. Like, it's because I know if I can get through this where I wanted to quit, like in any day-to-day situation, if I can get through this hundred miles or my first challenge is a workout. If I get through this workout, like that's so tough that I can get through me having a flat tire. That's a major inconvenience. Like it's okay. Like it will pass. Like I can get over my girl dumping me. Like it's okay. It will pass. Like I can get over the smaller things and just know like every challenge that I do, like if I can do that, I can get over this small day-to-day minutia because nobody's going to make me run a hundred miles on a day-to-day task. Like Never is someone going to held a gun to my head and be like, run this hundred miles. Like they're not going to follow me that long. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. They're going to say run a hundred. And then at like mile three, they're going to be like, all right, good enough. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, dude, that's a, that's a good answer. Now this next one is it's, it's just something that I'm always fascinated to hear from people who are, I consider you a high performer, right? Like you, you, like you said, you have your hand in so many pots, I think is the way that you described it. Um, Like, so for you having the level of self-awareness, you have relentlessly pursuing growth the way you do for you right now in your life, what's the next step or what's the next thing you're focused on in order for you to become or sustain your best self? Yeah. Um, so one big thing about me too, is like, I always try to have my next challenge booked, if not like my next two challenges, cause I don't want to ever like do something and then live in that moment for too long. Like, you know, my hundred miles is over. Like it's in the past. Like it's cool to talk about. I like absolutely like love talking about it, but I can't like live on and be like five years, like two years later, be like, yeah, I ran hundred miles back then. Like try to have that chip on my shoulder. So I always try to have the next thing. I don't want to be the person who's obsessed with what you've done, but what I'm going to do. Um, so, but the next thing I have is the Boston marathon. Um, yeah, April 17th is going to be Boston marathon is my next big focus. Um, but my main focus is so like, I'm focusing on that, but I'm not going to like try to PR big again. Like I definitely am going to try to PR, but my main focus is Kona. Like I want to qualify for the world championship Ironman. Like, in November. So everything that I do, like going forward, pretty much like how this is going to be your longest training camp. I think you said like 11 or 10 months when you started project ultra to like where you are, I'm going to kind of do that for my iron man in November. Um, so Boston, like I'll definitely be like running dominant, but I'm also going to like start biking and then running. So like I'll train, maybe it will help me because Boston's so hilly. Like it'll like help work on my, like my quads. Um, then from there, I think I am going to run, uh, the keys 100, uh, in the summer, just cause like one of the people that I ran this last 100 miles with, uh, she's doing that. And like, it would be an honor to run with her again. It's the same race director that's tentative. Um, depending on like how I think it will line up with training for my ir- full Ironman in November. Um, but yeah, Boston and then November Ironman. So those are like the two big next steps outside that. Um, I just, you know, like want to keep working and growing, finding the future. And then I love my job. So just keep improving in that area too. Just stay employed. I like yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it, oh my gosh. I'm, I'm starting to think maybe we're twins. Uh, just, you have a little longer hair. Cause dude, it is unreal. And I'm sure the more we get to know each other, we'll find things where we, we have different like approaches or different viewpoints. Yeah. And I very much look forward to continuing our conversations and finding some things to compare notes on. But it's like, dude, everything we talked about, just 
it's it's like I have a soundboard that I'm getting to like <laughs> you, and it's it's cool, man. It's it's so cool to see you going after everything you're going after to see just to see the reverence you have for life. Right. And that's something that, um, I, I find in myself because I can, you know, sit in that dark place when I'm training or when I'm doing these challenges, it allows me to almost like dump that energy into that and leverage it in a positive way. But then that allows me to then, because I dumped it into that experience, I can just move through so light and, I, I consider myself a, a childish old soul to where I do think, I mean, growing up, people told me I was an old soul and I, I think I do have that like philosophical mind, yeah. Yeah. but I'm also like, dude, I fully plan on having a swirly slide in my house when I get older, like guaranteed. And so there's, there's just little, little things like that. But dude, I, I gotta say, I appreciate you having the time to come on here, but yeah, just keep doing you, man. You're, you're inspiring <laughs> me. And I know you're, you made the comment, like you're fangirling. I'm telling you right now, that was me too. Like we hopped on and everything you said, I was like, Oh my God, this is awesome. Yeah. So keep doing you. I, I, and I'm sure many other people appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I, I definitely will keep trucking along. Like I don't plan on slowing down. All right. I'll hold you to that. And I'll, right. I'll hold myself to the same, but oh. I also want to let you know, I will definitely come out for your five day end of uh, Project Ultra. I won't run the half or the full, but I'll do one of the first three, the the sprint Olympic or maybe all three. Um, but all yeah, right. I'll, I'll be there. All right. Sure. Heck yeah. Let's do it. Let's see if we can get Justin out here too. He'd be uh, we could get him. Let's squat up. That'd be awesome, yeah. dude. I appreciate that. But so before we say our final goodbyes, is there anywhere like... I'm definitely going to put the finding future website in the comments, but is there anything else um, like social medias or websites or things that you want to throw in front of the people in case yeah. they want to keep up with your journey or donate to the nonprofit, any of that? Yeah. So the best way to like get into contact with me, if you wanted, or just like follow me to see what I'm doing is Instagram. Um my hashtag or my username is at Mason underscore James 209. So yeah, Mason underscore James 209. Um, you should find me if you like just type in like Mason underscore. Um, there's not too many Mason Jameses on Instagram. Um, but then other than that, it's just going to be findingfuture.org.org. Um, but yeah, then that tells the whole story, the why, where you can donate. Um, applications are live there, not live. Um, but applications is that's where they go live. Um, and that's pretty much everything that you could kind of need to know about finding future. Um, yeah, just those two, really. I don't have Twitter. I don't have, I, I mean, I have a YouTube, but it's not YouTubed. <laughs> All right. I feel like mine's not either. Mine's mine. No, dude, yours is good. You're consistent. Audience. Like, you're great. You're doing great. I appreciate I, that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, dude, I look forward to Cause again, if people follow me, they should follow my twin too. So uh, yeah. definitely give them a follow. And definitely if it's within your budget and you want to help out finding future, go check it out, go donate some money, go help someone dream big and execute on that dream. But other than that, I think we've about uh, done what we came here to do. So Mason, again, I just got to say, I appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate you being the example and I appreciate everything you're doing just from like with first form, helping people make sure that their nutrition is dialed, their supplementation is dialed, making sure that you are helping people through all these different avenues and really, again, showing up for yourself so that you can learn these lessons to help inspire others. Yeah, no, thank you so much. That means a lot. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I do thank you for reaching out to me. Like Little did I know I'd find my twin, like <laughs> scroll back, scroll back on my Instagram, like a year and a half. Like I've never had long hair before until these last two years. Um, Cause I've like always wanted to donate it. It's perfect time now to grow it out. But like your cut was the cut I had. Like I did like a three to five guard on the side and then just like pushed up the front. Um, so you might be impressed with like a photo. We might look really similar. <laughs> That's all right. You got the long and luscious. I got the short and sexy. We got it going on. Oh, okay. You there we go. I got it. You're quick with it. <laughs> All right. Well, dude, thank you again. And to everyone listening, always thank you for tuning in. 
I do this to hopefully give you, you know, whether it's a connection with someone who comes on, inspiration, some type of tool, tip, trick, philosophy, whatever it may be to help you on your journey. And if you've made it to this point, I guarantee you got a lot out of this one, but thank you for tuning in again. If you like this, that's why there's a like button. If you aren't subscribed and you like this, you're going to like the other ones coming down the pipeline. And if you know someone else who would like this, that's why there's a share button. But that is it for this episode. And we will catch you next time. Doses. <laughs> Peace.